woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Welcome back to That's Disturbing, the show where we dive into the creepiest and most baffling mysteries out there. Today, we're talking about a series of spooky disappearances that took place in the even spookier Bennington Triangle between 1945 and 1950. Grab your flashlight, gather round, and get ready to explore the enigmatic and unsettling tales that have puzzled investigators for decades. The Bennington Triangle is centered around Glastonbury Mountain and includes parts of the towns of Bennington, Woodford, Shaftesbury, and the ghost towns of Glastonbury and Somerset. The area is characterized by dense forests, rugged terrain, and unpredictable weather patterns. Now let's get into those disappearances. First up, we have Middy Rivers, a 74-year-old hunting guide who vanished on November 12, 1945. Middy was leading a group of hunters when he got ahead of them and was never seen again. The only clue left behind? A single rifle cartridge. Spooky. His disappearance marked the first in a series of mysterious vanishings that would occur in the Bennington Triangle area between 1945 and 1950. Rivers was last seen with his son-in-law, Joe Lozon. They separated at a fork in the trail, with Rivers stating he'd only be going a short distance before joining them at camp for lunch. When Rivers didn't return by 3 p.m., the hunting party began searching before alerting authorities. An extensive search was conducted in the area involving local authorities and volunteers. Despite the effort, very little evidence was found. The only clue discovered was a single rifle cartridge in a stream. Given Rivers' extensive experience as an outdoorsman and his familiarity with the area, his disappearance was particularly baffling. Paula Jean Weldon was born in Stamford, Connecticut, on October 19, 1928. She was the eldest of four daughters of William Archibald Weldon, a well-known industrial engineer, architect, and designer, and his wife Jean Douglas. In 1946, Paula was a 19-year-old sophomore at Bennington College in North Bennington, Vermont, residing in Dewey House Dormitory. On the afternoon of December 1st, Paula decided to hike on the Long Trail, a hiking route located a few miles from the Bennington College campus. She was last seen around 2.45 p.m., wearing a red coat. An elderly couple reported seeing her on the trail itself, about 100 yards ahead of them. They claimed she turned a corner, and when they reached the same spot, she had vanished. When Paula didn't return, her roommate initially thought she was studying in the library. Ground and air searches covered the long trail up to Glastonbury Mountain, ten miles north, various trail branches, and along Route 9 from Bennington to Brattleboro. A $5,000 reward was posted, and the FBI was involved in the investigation. Despite extensive efforts, no evidence of Paula's whereabouts was ever found. On December 1, 1949, exactly three years after Paula's disappearance, James E. Tedford, a veteran, vanished while on a bus. Witnesses saw him on the bus, but when it reached its destination, he was nowhere to be found. His luggage and an open bus timetable were left behind, but no James. It's like the bus made a pit stop in the twilight zone. Tedford boarded a bus bound for Bennington, and according to witnesses, he was seen on the bus until the last stop before Bennington. Somewhere between the last stop and Bennington, Tedford vanished. His belongings were still in the luggage rack, untouched. The disappearance wasn't immediately reported. According to the Bennington newspaper from December 8, 1949, Tedford boarded the bus on December 1st, but wasn't reported missing until December 7th. This delay in reporting complicated the investigation and search efforts. No trace of Tedford was ever found.
Paul Christen Jepson was an eight-year-old boy who lived in Bennington, Vermont. His disappearance occurred during a series of mysterious vanishings in the area between 1945 and 1950, which later became known as the Bennington Triangle Incidents. Paul was last seen by his mother at their pickup truck. His mother left him alone briefly to feed some pigs. She was reportedly gone for about an hour. Upon realizing Paul was missing, his mother promptly contacted the police. Bloodhounds picked up Paul's scent and followed it to a highway near Glastonbury Mountain. The scent trail vanished suddenly, seemingly in the middle of the road. Police speculated that rainfall might have washed away the scent trail, complicating the search. Despite thorough efforts, no further traces of Paul were ever found. Frida Langer was a 53-year-old woman who became the fifth and final victim in the series of mysterious disappearances known as the Bennington Triangle Incidents. Her case is particularly notable as it's the only one where remains were eventually found, though this discovery raised more questions than answers. Langer was on a camping trip with her family, including her husband, Max. Langer was hiking with her cousin, Herbert Elsner, when she slipped and fell into a stream. After falling, Langer told Elsner she would return to the campsite to change her wet clothes. She assured Elsner she would catch up with him shortly. The distance between where Langer left Elsner and the campsite was only a few hundred yards, but Frieda never came back. A search was initiated promptly after Langer's disappearance was reported. Over the next two weeks, five extensive searches were conducted. Police, volunteers, firefighters, and soldiers participated in the search. The search encompassed a wide area around the disappearance site. The initial search efforts lasted for several weeks before being called off. On May 12, 1951, about seven months after her disappearance, Langer's body was found in the eastern branch of the Deerfield River, approximately 3.5 miles from the original campsite. The area where her body was found had been previously searched, though only lightly. Due to advanced decomposition, no cause of death could be determined. Thanks for joining me on this eerie adventure. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode of That's Disturbing. Until next time, stay curious and maybe avoid hiking alone in mysterious triangles.